All right, the power of solitude, why I love being alone. So, to this day, I spend the vast majority of my time in my own company, alone. And there's a very good reason for that. So first of all, a bit about myself. I would describe myself to be a lone wolf, and I've been that way my entire life. And I don't see it as a negative label anymore, although I did used to. Uh, so growing up, uh, while I was in school, I was never able to develop any meaningful friendships or connections. Now, that wasn't to say I was completely alone during most of my school years. I did have what I would describe now as acquaintances, but you know, I was never able to go out there and just connect with people my age and just you know, make friends basically. It was always a challenge for me. I always felt like a, I guess a bit of a social outcast, if you may, and I never felt like I fit in, if you know what I mean. I never fit into you know, the community. I never fit in to society. And for a long time, I felt very shameful about it. I felt that there must have been something wrong with me. There must be a reason why I'm the only one, or it felt like I was the only one, you know, that had no, no friends really. And, you know, I had groups of people that I hung out with for a while, but then I got sick of them quickly and yeah, moved on to the next group. And yeah, you know, I've changed, I changed schools a few times and I was never able to develop any meaningful long-term friendships with anyone. And yeah, I, I really struggled throughout school. I hated school. Um, you know, academically, I did very well at school. I got good grades, but that was besides the point. I never fit in wherever I would go. And yeah, for I thought when I finished, when I got out of school, basically, I... I thought that, oh, you know, now is my chance. Now I get to step out in the real world and, you know, now I'll meet a bunch of new people and I'll finally be able to make some meaningful friendships. Well, that never happened. Um, when I left school, I basically cut ties with everyone I knew previously. Um, all my acquaintances, I basically decided, you know what, I just, I just want to cut ties with everyone, start fresh and, yeah, just go out there, make, make, my, make myself into a whole new person and yeah make a bunch of new friends and since then um the year after school was the loneliest year of my life and this is going to get now to the main topic um being alone versus being lonely so i spend a lot of time alone i have my entire life but i would describe that a lot of the time that i spend being alone i don't feel lonely you know the last two days you know i really struggled i really did and I felt this really deep sense of emptiness inside me. I felt lonely. I really, really craved some form of connection, anything to, you know, know that, you know, someone is there who loves me, someone is there who supports me, you know, you know, those feelings that you want, that you get sometimes where you just want someone who's there to support you. That's, that's loneliness, man. It's this deep longing for someone to just to know that someone is there for you, just that someone cares for you, basically. Whereas being alone, most of the time I don't have that feeling. And you know, it, I find it's very possible to be in a group of people and feel lonely. So for example, uh, in a previous video, I mentioned that I went to this event at a, at a pub. At that event, I felt just dead inside. I felt dead inside and I felt lonely. I felt, so I felt drained, I felt lonely, and I just felt, I felt dead basically. I didn't feel like I had any energy, I just felt like a dead person basically and I'm sure you can relate when you're in a group of people and you just feel lonely you feel you can't connect with anyone on any meaningful level and that's exactly what happened with me basically I felt like I couldn't connect to anyone on any meaningful level there were um, I had nothing in common with anyone and yeah I felt really lonely then and I was really pissed off afterwards um, and then basically I spent a few hours out in the garden on this block on this block right here and you know, I was completely alone with no one else for company and I didn't feel lonely at all. In fact, I felt connected, I felt alive and I felt loved because that's really what it boils down to, isn't it? Love, you know, that's when loneliness, when we feel that we aren't loved, when we feel that we, you know, we want love but we don't know if we don't feel that we deserve it or we just don't feel it exists in our life, that's when we feel lonely. And um, many times when I'm alone, 
I really feel that I can be grounded and connected to myself and when I do that I can feel that I love myself and when you love yourself that is just the most powerful feeling and I have a long way to go in that in that in that regards man it's learning to love yourself that's one of the most challenging parts of this journey so yeah that's being alone versus being lonely and another thing I want to want to talk about is people that many people seem to really be really terrified of being alone but the truth is that when you're alone are you actually alone you know so I'm just here on this block right now and it may seem like I am alone but you know the truth is I'm not alone look who I have here I've got my friend Mr. Django Mr. Django yep pets oh, whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> tripping over my chair here Ooh, it's a bit uneven there yeah getting back to the point um, yeah I've got my I've got I've got my dog here Django and having pets that can go a long way to easing loneliness I mean I'm alone I'm not spending any time with other humans right now but you know there's plenty of animals you know there's not just him my dog there's there's a nice thin strip of nature here and yeah you know I've seen a bunch of other animals here there's birds, there's crickets, there's a bunch of other animals here that I can hear. But that's just talking about, you know, this earth, nature, you know, the third dimension, basically. Um, when it comes to other dimensions, um, higher power and a higher power, basically. You know, when it comes to that, that's a whole other story, man. Now, I'm not going to talk about spirituality or religion in this video that's a whole other topic but you know whatever you believe in man it's I think it's really important to have some form of connection to a higher power that's why I use the word higher power I'm not going to say God or anything like that because it's like I'm not going to push any belief on you 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 whoever you are watching this you probably have your own belief I have my own um, but yeah, you know, you can call it a higher power, the divine. If you want, you can call it God. You can call it, you know, spirits, the gods, whatever you want. And whatever you believe in. And that's the truth, man. There's, there are beings all around us. There's beings that we can see, ourselves, animals. But, you know, there's also a bunch of other beings out there. You know, like, I, I'll, I'll just come out a bit with my own beliefs. You know, I, I believe in higher be higher dimensional beings i believe in um that for example my grandmother passed away a few days ago i don't believe that my grandmother is gone i truly do believe that the soul is immortal and my grandmother her spirit whatever form she is in now is still with us it's still with all of us who knew her her spirit still lives on in me and the spirit of all our ancestors lives on in us just as when we die our spirit will live on in our descendants and yeah that's my that's part of my belief and it's not a very common belief to have in you know the Western societies especially the based on the Abrahamic faiths but if you look at you know many other parts of the world our, or many you know past societies you know it was a common belief that you know like the ancestors were always with us and when you have that sort of belief, you believe in some form of higher power and you recognize the true power of nature, the universe, the divine, you realize that you're never truly alone. And in fact, when you understand that, you probably will want to spend a lot more time alone. I know I do, because when I'm around, when I'm in our society, our society that's programmed by you know those who control society with the narrative the narrative that tells us that you know we need to just go and consume more stuff that we need to uh, that we need a big house that we need to buy a flashier car that we need to go and get a job that we need to go and fit into you know whatever society wants us to do that we need to look for love and validation outside of us that we have no rights and freedom on our own you know that narrative that society that tells us, those who, those who control it, they tell us basically that we don't deserve to be loved, that we are alone, 
that we live in a dark, cold, lifeless universe. But that couldn't be further from the truth. It could not be further from the truth. Anyway, that's my deep spiritual rant, I guess, about um, being alone versus being lonely. It's why I love to spend so much time alone. And it's why I consider myself to be a lone wolf to this day. And that's why I think it's very important and very powerful to learn to spend time in your own company. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.